Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K. I'm Hydrogen Man. Guys, before I begin, I'm going to let you know I'm not going to give you any medical advice. I'm not going to make any medical claims, but today is a very important video, so I definitely suggest to stay tuned till the very end because I'm going to be giving a lot of information. This is years of my work in compiling data in order to share with you guys my personal protocol. I actually have different protocols, but I'm gonna share one that, in my opinion, works for just about most people out there. So again, don't forget to support the channel by giving a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And thank you everybody for your support. So before further ado, the first thing I wanna say before the protocol is the equipment that I'm using is literally, the protocol is dependent on the equipment. You cannot, in my opinion, you do not wanna follow this protocol with the wrong equipment. So to give you some examples, any of these portable bottles, I still haven't found any good ones yet. They directly electrolyze the water. They obviously have high risks for leaching metals. In fact, in Japan, they're now having to warn people and customers on their websites. They have to say things like, you know, you're drinking this at your own risk due to possible metal leaching only on these type of bottles because of the way that they make the hydrogen. So I would not follow the protocol with something like this that I'm about to show you because you're running the risk of causing some harm. So that's the first thing. My protocol also, do not use hydrogen pills for this particular protocol. Again, in my opinion, they're not good. Japan also knows that. They've also, they're developing new ones that do not use magnesium like these do. So in my opinion, again, just do not follow these protocols with the wrong type of equipment. So the first thing I'm gonna say, now obviously we're following the protocol with a Lourdes Hydrofix Premium. That's what I base my protocols on because hydrogen is very long-term. And because of that, you wanna make sure that you're not leaching metals. You wanna make sure that you're not using chemicals. There's other devices that use chemicals, like specifically Brown's gas devices, you know, HHO. They use chemicals to make the hydrogen. And usually the chemical is something like lye, L-Y-E, and it's pretty toxic. I would never suggest this protocol for something like that either. So I, this is probably one of the most crucial things. And so with that being said, um, long-term stuff, you want it to be super clean. The other part of my protocol before I get into it is you want to use super clean water. You can see that I have literally water that has been distilled and also using carbon. Um, I have charts. Uh, maybe I can uh, share them with people if they want to. But the point is, is that the water being the cleanest, for my opinion, that's also part of the protocol. So with that being said, we know the equipment. We know the kind of water. How do I follow the protocol? The protocol for me starts first thing in the morning. When you get up and you probably go use the restroom the first thing, but the first thing you actually want to do is brush your teeth. And I don't mean with toothpaste. It doesn't matter if you don't use toothpaste. More than anything is you want to brush your teeth and maybe 20 seconds, but you want to brush the inner lining of your mouth, guys. That means the inner lining of the cheeks, the roof of your mouth, your tongue. And you may be wondering, what does this have to do with the hydrogen protocol? Well, the reason is because there is data now showing there's a huge link between your mouth, how clean it is, and different medical issues. So before we start putting something like hydrogen water into our body, I don't wanna drink anything until my mouth is clean because otherwise you're gonna inadvertently swallow that bacteria and they've been linking it even in Japan in studies to things like cancer. We, grow, we can grow all sorts of different bacteria in our mouth at night. So when you wake up and you drink something, you're swallowing this stuff into your system. Is it gonna make you sick in one day or two days? No, or a week. But in the long term, it can affect you. So with that being said, that's the first thing that you do. After you clean your mouth, the very first thing you wanna do, voila, is drink hydrogen water. Obviously, again, uh, besides all the other things I also mentioned, don't use water ionizers that change the pH of the water because again, don't follow this protocol if it's not the proper equipment. So. The amount of water, it really depends, right? Because every single person is different. Some people have kidney issues. They're limited on the amount of water they can drink. There's a lot of different factors, the size of a person, but this is roughly what I do. If you notice on the Hydrofix, there's a little line right here, and this is half a liter. This line up here means that it's 1.5 liters. I drink one liter. That is the maximum that I would do. Why? Because the science shows that our body can only process one liter of water. Our kidneys can only process one liter in one hour. So that's why I do it that way, so that I don't strain my body. Could I drink more than one liter? I could, but that's a good amount. For people who cannot do that, I usually say, well, maybe half a liter, but half a liter is the absolute minimum. So that's the way that I would go about that. All right, so moving on. I always have a cup next to my hydrogen machine. This one's quite large, literally holds 20 ounces of water. So what I do in the morning is, I'll pour myself a big glass and I'll drink it all down. Now here's the other part of the protocol. You don't wanna fill up a glass and then just sip on it. 
you want to pour whatever amount that you can pour, no matter where it is on this glass, that you can drink, in my opinion, right away. I usually drink mine within a minute. And so you don't want to pour up here and sip on it. You'd rather pour down here and just kind of gulp it all down or drink it all down because you want all that hydrogen in you guys. So that's why I always have it next to my machine and I just, you know, pour water and I immediately drink it. Once you're done consuming the amount that you choose to do, for me, it's one liter. I usually drink the water until it's right here, until I see it, because once it reaches half a liter mark, I know that I've drank one liter because the whole thing is 1.5 liters. So after I drink it, then you wait about 20 or 30 minutes before you go and either do like your breakfast or whatever it is that you choose to do. However, if you want to enhance it, this is what I mean is that there's different parts to the protocol. Some people, if they have major issues, they'll drink the hydrogen water. Now, here's the other important factor about a proper hydrogen protocol. You don't want to just inhale the gas, guys. Honestly, that's super foolish. A lot of people promote that. They obviously haven't read the science. The science is clear that the hydrogen water is more effective than the gas. Does it mean that we don't want to inhale the gas? No, it doesn't mean that. What it means, though, is that at the foundation of hydrogen therapy, water is at the foundation of it. So it always starts with the water. Don't just think that you're gonna be able to inhale the gas. And I am talking about pure gas. I'm not talking about being mixed with oxygen or other uh, components, which have a lot of uh, different things, other gases that happen when you directly electrolyze water. So it's not just oxygen and hydrogen. There are other gases that appear depending also on the type of water that you're using, but I don't wanna get into all those complexities right now. Now, so once you drink the water, if you kind of want to enhance the protocol, you would inhale the hydrogen gas, but you do the water first. This is one of the things that I've discovered. If you hydrate the body first, especially with hydrogen water, all of a sudden the hydrogen gas is now enhanced. I can go into why I believe that is, uh, but I don't need to go into that right now because this is going to be already kind of a long video. So you can inhale the gas afterwards. You could do 30 minutes, that's fine. And then you can go eat because it takes about a good 20 to 30 minutes for the water to go through your GI. This is the reason why we're doing it on an empty stomach. That's why we're doing it first thing in the morning. This is part of the protocol. Doing it uh, with uh, food in your stomach is not the ideal way. You can do that if you're thirsty and your water does, is not altered, you know, the pH, you don't alter it because that can screw up stomach acids and digestion and you feel like having some water while you're eating, that's fine. But my protocol is you drink it on an empty stomach. So that's, that's part of how to enhance the hydrogen. And so again, if you want to inhale after that, that's fine. Here's a trick. After you do your breakfast, eat a breakfast and then do not eat, don't snack on anything. Don't eat anything until lunch. So you're allowing your stomach to run empty. By the time lunchtime comes around, you're on an empty stomach again, and you do it again. So as you can see, I'll do another liter but you can do a minimum of half a liter. This is the range that you kind of want to be in. And so I'll drink probably almost a liter is what I do before lunch. Um, and then you can do inhalation again if you want, because now it's going to be enhanced. It's enhanced when you're properly hydrated. And for some reason, when you, do, when you hydrate with hydrogen, it seems to enhance even more. And uh, we could do a separate video about that at some point if people are interested in why that happens. But after you do that, after you drink the water before your lunch, and if you wanna do inhalation, fine. If not, then wait roughly 20 to 30 minutes and then you can do your lunch. Another trick that I do is I'll often be inhaling the hydrogen gas while I'm eating. So when I sit down for my smoothie or whatever, I will put on the gas and I'll be inhaling it while I'm eating. That's another tip that really, really helps. Uh, it's one of my little secrets that I've discovered in time. And so if you guys choose to do that, you can do that, that's up to you. After you do that, again, after lunch, you don't inhale, or I'm sorry, you don't eat anything. <laughs> you don't inhale your food. <laughs> but basically, you, you don't want to eat anything up until dinner time. Once you're at dinner time, again, you're on an empty stomach. You're par probably seeing a pattern by now. Then before dinner, you again drink between half a liter to one liter is your range. And you go ahead and drink the water. And then if you want to inhale again, you can. So you're seeing this pattern. You don't have to. If you only have time to inhale once a day, I would do it before bedtime. That's probably the ideal time. Uh, but I have mine all set up just for inhalation now because I have two machines now. And I literally just inhale a lot here whenever I sit down and I'm on the computer. Or if I sit down here to eat, I'm doing a lot of inhalation like that. And then obviously I drink water throughout the day. 
If you drink the water on an empty stomach before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, in between meals, if you feel like having water, by all means, guys, more hydrogen water. It's no big deal. In fact, it's just gonna be better. And that's roughly the hydrogen protocol. I mean, I have multiple protocols that I do combining certain things. In this case, we're just combining super clean water, the proper hydrogen water, and then the proper hydrogen gas inhalation. That's what I'm showing here. I mean, I have deworming protocols. Obviously, I have fasting protocols, dietary protocols. There's a lot of different types of protocols that I have, but this is your hydrogen protocol that I have found to be the safest and most effective. And again, safety, I cannot emphasize it enough because it really can take hydrogen a long time to do certain things. I mean, I saw again, my father's glaucoma took three years. You're gonna be consuming this stuff for three years. Hence the reason you don't want cheap metals. Most of these machines are all made in China, Taiwan, Korea. Some of them they claim are from Japan, but I found out there's a lot of lies out there and they actually use all these Chinese parts and then they put them together in Japan and they can legally say that they're made in Japan. Um, that's apparently a loophole. You want to use proper equipment. There's no way that I'd be taking the pills for three years. Uh, that that is actually another one that's crazy. I've there was um I've shared it with you guys before, but for those who haven't seen the video, there was a bunch of people who did the pills, did blood work before and after, and all their liver numbers looked worse after using the pills. And the studies show that hydrogen is good for the liver. And I've seen when people use the proper equipment like the Hydrofix, I've seen people with fatty liver disease and also people with cirrhosis of the liver get incredible improvement or those issues completely go away. So the equipment matters, the way that you're making hydrogen matters because there is at least three or four really good ways to be making hydrogen and not all of them are the best for human consumption or for drinking the water and whatnot. So hopefully this gives you guys insight into the best hydrogen protocol that you guys can do, giving you an idea of how to utilize this water and how the empty stomach, you know, really helps, how doing the water before the gas inhalation. And these, this is what I've discovered after years, guys, of research, a lot of work, and I really hope that you guys are appreciating this because it's really paid off for me to do it correctly and for a lot of people that I know. And everybody's been asking this question for a very long time and I've never released my official full protocol. And again, I do change it depending on what's going on with the person. But in general, this is just kind of an average uh, way of doing it. And I think it gives people a lot of insight on how to possibly do it. So thank you for watching. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on the next one.